Hello everyone and welcome back to Anything Joe's, a collaborative journey through the world of G.I. Joe. My name is Greg Engel. And I'm Jaron Decker. And we'll be your host today. Jaron, it has been, uh, feels like a lifetime since we recorded an episode. It really does. Like I was kind of shaking off the rust as we were getting ready and kind of talking before we started recording it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fun i apologize in advance to everyone listening yeah we got caught up in i mean it's holiday time we uh, i finally have successfully moved from a from an old home to a less old home (laughs) and so i'm kind of i've got my computer set up on cardboard boxes and i'm turning this crank to power this microphone right now um but i've gotten everything in a fundamental position where i think we can start putting content out uh as 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 semi-regularly as we were at least uh, we'll at least do as good (laughs) as we were doing in the beginning don't hope for any better though guys that's right don't hope for anything other than only a slightly irregular schedule so we have kind of missed a, fl- a little bit of a news window, and that's what we're going to cover on this episode. We're going to talk about some little stuff that's been happening. We're going to talk about those new classified figures that just got announced. Uh, we'll look at that retro wave, um, and we'll go from there. So probably one of the things that I've been looking forward to the most this year is the release of this G.I. Joe cartoon vinyl soundtrack. So they teased this earlier in the year. It's finally started to release and I don't have mine in hand yet, and that's only because at the last minute they announced that Barnes & Noble had an exclusive uh, red vinyl version, and so I was immediately like, well, that's the one I want. Because I actually own a record player, and I'm pr- actually I'm pretty excited to see, to hear, well, I don't have to wait to see what it sounds like, because they also put it up on all the streaming services. So the day that that went live, I immediately pulled it up on Spotify and listened to the whole thing at work. And I have to say, I'm extremely impressed with it. Other than the theme song, I, well, I know you've watched a few episodes, Sharon. But are you familiar with this soundtrack at all? Not at all. So trying to listen to it was a really cool experience. Yeah, they have re they repurposed some stuff from the car- the GI Joe cartoon that was in the Transformers cartoon as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it came which came first or if it was interchangeable. But you would see a lot of the same songs being used. And prior to this release, there had been a, I guess a bootleg is the appropriate word, but there was like a fan production that put the soundtrack together in the best possible quality they could with what they had, which to their credit was pretty admirable because there's a ton of, there's, it's very rare that only the soundtrack is playing. There's usually laser shooting or people screaming or whatever. <laughs> oh, Joe. Yeah, really, it really was. And so there was a version that showed up on YouTube maybe a year or two ago that had a lot of sound, a lot of the soundtrack in a pretty, again, a pretty respectable quality to listen to, including some stuff that's not available on this. They don't have any of the music that was made specifically for the for the movie soundtrack, uh, the animated movie soundtrack, <laughs> which is uh, kind of a bummer because that does have some of my favorite music in it. But once I listened to the whole thing, I was amazed at a the overall quality of the audio is phenomenal. Obviously sourced from some sort of master that I, that we, the public, have never had access to. And B, there's a lot of very small sections that uh, I had never heard. I don't think I'd ever heard. Either didn't typically show up in an episode or maybe is an extended version of what they were using or didn't serve their purposes. So every once in a while, I'd pop my head up and be like, oh, I, I, that's a little piece of a bridge to that song I've never heard before. I'm going to play just a short sample of it right now for those of you that have might have been sleeping on this. Uh, you, I really encourage you to check it out. Now, Greg, do you have this all memorized yet? Like, you, you know exactly what's happening already? 
It's well, it's funny because when you these songs are used over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So even though the labels will be like, "Oh, this song was used in the Mass Device Part Four, or this song is from the Phantom Brigade, or this song is from Twenty Questions," the reality is it was in maybe every episode. There would there would specifically <laughs> be like, "Oh, they're on the run," and then the specific theme would play, or there's like this crazy cobra hissing noise that plays when every time they like approach cobra mountain so you can't you don't hear any one theme and go oh this is the part where duke dies mm. slash goes into a coma it's <laughs> they're they're used over and over and over again and some of this stuff there i you know, i hadn't heard much at all but yeah i think they they picked a great selection there's a lot of really great tracks on it I am thrilled that uh, after all this time, it finally gets a release and that it's a high quality release. I would like to, there's more, I'm sure there are more tracks available that didn't make this cut. And it's, um, it's great. I'm actually, I'm extremely happy with it. I'm looking forward to listening to it on vinyl, even though it's a, uh, an unusual, I, I guess the concept behind it is, CDs are dead, right? Mm -hmm. And most all other physical media relating to music is dead. But vinyl is not only making a resurgence, as has outselling CDs um, all across the board most recently, but is also a cool throwback to the 1980s when CD or when records were actually the commonplace purchase. You know, in the cassette tape era, I'm old enough to remember going into a Walmart <laughs> as a kid and being like. Uh, I think my first record was like Muppet Hits or something because I was like, oh, I really want, oh, this has got Manon Manon on it. And everybody knows Manon Manon from the Muppets. So, and I had a Weird Al vinyl. So anyway, this is a good, I think this is a good throwback to that era. It's some. It's also something if you don't have a record player, it frames up well and is a good display piece because uh, we've got some records framed in our house. And I think it's a good idea. So anyway, if you haven't heard it, check it out. Don't write it off just because there's a YouTube bootleg up there. I don't. I feel like the audio quality, the fidelity there is, are on two different worlds. Yeah, and uh, another thing with that Barnes & Noble exclusive, especially that poster is really cool. Oh, that's right. The Barnes & Noble version does come with a, like a limited edition poster that's also really neat. It's just a good release overall. It's not overpriced. I think it's I think it's a fair offering for something that fans have been hoping for for an extremely long time. Yeah. Uh, the other tiny news item before we get into the figure reviews is that G.I. Joe Operation Blackout finally got a confirmed PC release. It looks like December 15th is the day. So if you've been sleeping on it because you don't have a console or you're still you're still on the fence about the reviews, which is understandable, then this version will be out. It's less than a month away. And it is it looks like it's being developed through Fair Play Labs as opposed to the original designers at Wannabe. So these guys are in charge of the PC conversion, basically, mm. which is pretty common one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, just like when a game gets remastered, it's very rarely handled by the original team. They hand it off to somebody. Like, we did all the heavy lifting. Now you, you know, finish it off for us, and these guys are going to do the same. So we've covered Operation Blackout pretty extensively on our YouTube channel. If you haven't checked that out yet, take a look, because I feel like there's a lot of good content there, not just in terms of game review, but uh, upcoming potential behind-the-scenes stuff that maybe revealed more than they wanted to. But I am looking forward to seeing this. I'd like to see if it has any exclusive content for the PC. I'd like to see if there are any improvements made on the game since we played it originally. You know, Iguanabe has been very forthcoming in acknowledging the problems that the game has, and I feel like for a budget title, they've really done the best they can to update it and address those problems. There's some li there were like there's like no lip syncing in the game when we played it, and I think mm -hmm. they've updated it now to where that's actually starting to happen. Oh well, that's good. Yeah, so they are taking what people consider to be the bigger problems, and they're they're making an effort. I mean, that's more than most companies do. If this had yeah. been like an Activision title, they'd just be like, "Well, get over it." By the DLC. Yeah. We fixed it, but you have to pay $50 for the season pass. Yeah, so anyway, that's coming on December 15th. We'll take a look at it when it comes out and see if, if there's anything worth bringing back up to the attention of the public. We'll we'll talk about it. Yeah, and, you know, especially with PCs, we'll, we will have the ability to stream it. So maybe if you want to come suffer or enjoy yourself along with us. Oh, that's right. Yeah, well, absolutely. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing I mean, I could do another playthrough. I played it pretty aggressively on the console. <laughs> I think it will be a lot better on the PC. Just to touch on it again, my biggest gripe was the aiming. 
of course, is going to should in theory be a lot better on PC. That's true. My biggest complaint about it is the aiming also. So if they get the mouse and keyboard angled down, uh, it it really could turn the game around quite a bit. Yeah. So let's look at these two new classified figures. Yes. Hasbro Pulse did a uh, what do they call the Friday thing? Fan Fan First Friday. Fan First Friday. That's some good alliteration right there. And then some days it's Fan First Mondays or Thursdays or whatever day. They just kind of it even the graphic normally they like just X out Friday and right the, the new day <laughs> those are for the the lesser toys only friday is reserved <laughs> for the top tier toys so they <sighs> they showed two new figures off from the classified series and i think we were kind of we knew this was coming down the pipeline at least the rumor mill had been hinting at these characters for a bit and they so they announced flint lady J, which i'm sure everyone is aware of by now it's kind of weird that these figures don't come out for a really long time yeah It'll be middle of next year before these figures are actualized. And so that's very surprising to me that they uh, jump the gun a little bit in, in the sense that, that's a man, that's a long time for me to wait to get my hands on t- new figures. Yeah. But let's take a look at both of these figures, and, and I wanna, I'm interested in your thoughts on it. And we'll start with Flint first. All right. So the Flint figure that's come out is, again, this is a pretty faithful uh, reproduction of the original Flint. They've taken some liberties with his face sculpt, which we've, we've touched on this before, but when you're anytime you're modernizing a figure, especially, and also making them larger, you get a lot more space to play around with the details of what's going on with them. So a lot of G.I. Joe figures don't really have a, like a look, I guess, that is very definitive and this flint is no exception the the, when i look at this flint's face he's got like a scar over his eye that is not really something that uh, has an origin it's just they've put it there to kind of help define his characteristics a little bit he really reminds me of the uh renegades version of flint he's got kind of that smarmy vibe i think that's a pretty classic flint look you can see that he has the old knee pads and uh, foot braces, but they've chosen to paint them black. I'm guessing that that feedback is finally, I mean, I really do feel like it's finally sunk in that the, the gold is not going to fly. So yeah. maybe these were so far along in the production that they were like, well, we can't unmake them, just paint them black. And you know what? That's fine. I'll settle for that. Can you imagine if that center of his chest like webbing was gold as well? That they painted black. I could, dude, I could totally see that being a thing also. Yeah, so. Because it looks like armor, and it would not surprise me if in, in the original creation and design process of that, that was gold, the knee pads were gold, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. And I'm so I'm very happy that what we've got in reality is a much more streamlined look for Flint. He uh, doesn't, he's not too busy. Like, he's kind of got the basics. His, he, that, like, I don't know if that's called a bandolier where he's got all his, like, shotgun shells, but. Well, we can call it a bandolier. I think that works. That's a, that's kind of a classic Flint trademark there. And he also obviously comes with a shotgun. I think that's a shotgun. I mean,. It does probably fire Nerf darts, but it at least <laughs> resembles a shotgun. Hey, it might not look like a realistic shotgun, but it looks like a shotgun. It's got, you know, the little pump thing. Mm-hmm. It's got shells on the side. I'll take it. I'll give them credit for, like, doing a little bit more of the detailing on stuff like that. Like the mm-hmm. like the pump action is painted a different color. The individual shells are popping out, and they show as gold. So it looks like they're... And that shotgun breaks apart, which is really cool. Yeah, it's extremely nice. And then that's it. He has a pistol that for, and a holster for it, and he's got a removable beret, much to nobody's surprise. I'm assuming that it has to be the same one they use with Beachhead. Yeah, it looks like it. What do you think that thing is on his, beside his neck? It's like a silver piece with a blue dot in the center? That looks, it's, it's similar to what they have with Duke on his. And I think Roadblock has one. Some kind of like communicator? Yeah. It's the only thing I can really think of. Now, Greg, to, uh, my last point on the shotgun, because I, I like shotguns, um, it is weird to see the break open, because in one of the pictures it looks like he's loading the shotgun, right? Mm-hmm. So that's normally a single shot or, you know, whatever. So in that case, there's no need for a pump. Oh, interesting. So I am confused as to how the mechanics work there. So maybe if they eventually add him to the game, we'll see what's going on. Similar to how we did with Roadblock's gun, where we were just like, well, what is this and why is it this way? Yeah. So it looks like they went for more personality instead of practicality. But 
it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm happy that they're trying things. Just from a functionality perspective, I don't understand. Because normally, if you would put it in there, you'd put it in there, pick it up, and shoot it, and then break it open, take that out, and do it again. But yeah, I don't. I'm not sure now that you bring that up. It. I. I don't know. You got me. And for all I know, you cock that thing and then it fires a laser. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's probably what it is. It converts that Nerf bullet into a laser. <laughs> <laughs> Great custom artwork on the package by uh, Ryan Ke- or by Rich Kelly. Again, I'm still a huge fan of all of the uh, custom artwork that they've been using on the boxes. I think they all really they do all they all really stand out and they like they all wow me just in a different way. So I like this figure a lot. This is a figure that I would not have wanted to wait too much longer on. I know the roster is huge and difficult to choose from, but I think Flint is a no-brainer. And I think if you're going to get a Flint, then the, the the most practical partner is the Lady J. So, let's look at this Lady J. This... <laughs> <laughs> I just immediately pull up the second promo image of her, and if I have never seen a more deer in the headlights look on a person's face, <laughs> like she looks like a she looks like a synthoid in this. She's the, which is a shame because the hair sculpting is great and the face is a good design, but much like a throwback to when we were reviewing the first figures, and we were talking about how Scarlet kind of has that same just like dazed and confused look jay does too she has a weird just kind of like blank i don't know i just look at that and i'm like oh it's a Westworld robot <laughs> so that aside uh i do like this figure i don't think it's as good as the flint figure but i think it's got a lot that works for it again it's a it's a classic design that they've not changed hardly at all it she's got like a removable hat and that's one of the maybe the one of the first times that's ever happened where she's actually not like molded with it on this is something that i had we talked about on the operation black point review as well but behind the scenes look at her showed that she has like a gun that she shoots the spear out of and if i remember correctly i was specifically like that's a weird take but as long as the spear is removable and she can just hold the spear i'll be fine with it and sure enough that's exactly what you can do so I am, first of all, pumped that I said something a month ago on, an, on a YouTube video and it was accurate. <laughs> and second of all, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that that's how they did it. Uh, the gun itself is, I mean, I don't know a lot about javelins, so I have no idea if that's based in, do you have any knowledge of some, a gun like this? Is this a thing or did they make it up? <laughs> <laughs> not that I know of. I mean, I'm not I'm not an expert as much as I like to geek out over small shotgun details. I would have to imagine there's something like this. I mean, this is basically like a motorized addle addle, you know, like the, the like thing that like launches the javelin mm-hmm. instead of just throwing it. But I mean, it looks cool, but I don't I don't know what it's from. Yeah, I don't either. And that's fine because I'm never going to use that part of it. You know what? Actually, I just thought of it. It's probably got the little hot wheeled launchers that launches the cars inside. <laughs> So it just launches the spear. That's what it is. It's like a t-shirt cannon and it has the word (laughs) Hasbro written on it. it Turns Cobras. So Lady J's accessory set is not quite a bit more, but it is definitely more robust than Flint's. She's Mm -hmm. She's got the removable hat. She's got the gun with the javelin. She's got a, I guess that's a removable tip on her second spear i don't know if they're both like that or not and it looks like the tip of that one is different than the other one you see what i'm talking about yeah it looked from what uh what i heard them talking about is that it's supposed to be like an explosive tip oh okay okay so she that's has cool two regular spearheads and then like an explosive spearhead so that kind of falls in line with the animated lady J, who would be like oh we're falling don't worry this one makes a net or has an explosive <laughs> like it was kind of like a makes me think of hawkeye from the marvel universe where she would just produce a spear that or green arrow was another great example old school mm-hmm. green arrow would be like oh this one's got a boxing glove on the end bop, bop. yeah she's like uh the inspector gadget yeah 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 absolutely like, oh, we need this so good thing i have it take a look at her this backpack and give me some input i'm specifically looking at the shot where you can see the back of it mm-hmm. is that so she's got a little, I don't know what that is, the little thing that like folds out from the side. Yeah, there's a better shot of it up. Yeah, she has it extended like vertically in this other promo shot, but it still doesn't really... It almost looks like a GoPro, honestly. 
I mean, yeah, or maybe like a, a radio antenna or a yeah. scanner of some sort. Maybe like a targeting system for something. I don't know. I like how they keep giving us the practical ability to like store the accessories in the backpack. Yeah, so that was going to be the other thing I was going to say is that they like cut it out and I guess it, it I guess it is removable because it doesn't look like it like folds over. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I like the idea that it can be stored. It has a spot to sport to put the other javelin on there to like clip it on. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff with this figure. Even though the face is a little scary, if I look at it for too long, it kind of it kind of haunts me a little bit. Yeah, something that I know we will probably hear about if we don't mention it. Um, if you look at her elbows, they are double jointed and pinless. Okay, and what does that mean exactly? So, same thing with the knees. So, if you look at your Scarlet, or if you think about Scarlet, Scarlet has just one oh, joint at her Oh, elbow. boy, do I ever. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you'd have her within reach. Um, if you're looking at my screen, Scarlet, you can see... Hold on, i got to get it to the camera. You can see the holes in the knees. You can see the holes. Um, the elbow's not as much because it's a single joint on Scarlet, but if it was a double-jointed elbow... Um, like one of the like one of the the male figures, mm-hmm. um, there'd be pins on there as well, similar to how the knees are, where you see those little the little cutouts with the circles on it. Okay. Oh, almost dropped Duke, but I got him. Let me uh, hold him up to the camera there. Nope, nope, not me, Duke. Okay, so you can see those little these little circles here. Um, so those are pins which make that joint work. Um, if I'm sure no one remembers, but when we first reviewed Scarlet, I said, Hasbro, it is time to give us double jointed elbows and all female characters. You can do it. Mm-hmm. And this is this is them listening to me specifically. They heard me and were like, okay, we'll do it. So do male characters typically have that and they excluded it from females? Yeah, so normally because of the size of the female character's arms, they don't do the double joints as much. I see. Um, but with the new pinless technology, which they also have in uh, some of the Marvel Legends, like the old man Hawkeye, um, they're starting to move this way to where you don't see those balls. It makes it look a little more accurate. Um, but also on this one, it makes it to where she is double jointed. So you'll be able to... Um, I'm trying to see if any of the photos show off. I guess they're kind of showing it off where she's got like her hands behind her, like she's like in a military position. Yeah, kind of. But even better, if you go up a little bit to the one of her kind of grabbing her hat, Uh I don't think there's any way that the Scarlet would be able to grab that hat. Okay, okay. Scarlet is barely, she can barely get 290. Yeah. I'll hold it up to the camera again. She can barely get... 290 whereas this one looks like she can get way further um so it's going to be great for people to do figure photography and things like that it makes me want to buy another lady j take the legs and arms off and paint it to work with the scarlet (laughs) because they are much better um and the new pinless technology just looks really cool Um, that's awesome again that same grabbing the hat um you can see how much better it looks how much cleaner it is on those elbows Hmm. and then the other thing i want to point out is that hat has the hair molded on it as well so i think that's a really cool because it would have been really hard to get a hat to fit over that hair so they just molded the hair on the bottom of the hat oh i didn't even catch that yeah so if you look there you can see that same picture that hair is molded onto that hat. They talked about it in the live stream a little bit. Can't really see it in any of the pictures. A little bit on the one of the white background with the accessories. Uh-huh. Um, but you can take her hair off and it's just like a head. And then you put the hat on. That's a pretty cool trick. And also opens up a lot for customization. Mm-hmm. Like if yep. you want to use Lady J's face to make a different female character boom you've got you know her hair is removable yeah you can usually like green stuff and mold some new hair yeah that's really cool all right so i mean both of these figures pretty happy with both of them i feel like we've hit a pretty successful streak of of announcements in the over the last little bit they're not target exclusives so that's a big win i was able to actually get a pre-order in for them <laughs> yeah man i think we're i think they've been on fire lately everything that's not been what i want has still been minor, real minor things. Like, does Lady J look like she's seen a ghost and gone dead inside? <laughs> yeah, she does. But is that a deal breaker? Nah, absolutely not. She's still a great figure. A lot of that comes down to not deviating too much from the formula. Like, these guys are, these are both 
very recognizable figures. They didn't modernize them too much. Like I keep thinking about that sci-fi figure that they showed in black out and I, which I know is coming. We all know is coming. Yeah. And I'm like, and I do love that figure, but I, I'm always like, man, they really took a lot of liberties, like futurizing him up. Mm -hmm. and they didn't do that with these two, so I'm really, really happy with both of these classified figures. I'm wondering if the reason we haven't seen that figure announced is because they're going to try to make some changes there and make it... I mean, I know they won't be able to make as many of the big, wide changes, you know, to really redirect that figure back, but maybe how they did with these. Now, with her, I don't see anything that could have been gold, really. I think they... She might have just been this way. And then one other point about the, the... A random point about the Flint... It looks like he's the first Joe character without an actual backpack. He's just got the sling for his shotgun. Hmm, that's interesting. Every everyone else has has a backpack that I can think of. Every other Joe character. He's like, I'm too cool for backpacks. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't need all that. He has a shotgun, and that's what he needs. He's got makes the lackeys carry all his stuff. <laughs> he just throws it all in Duke. He's like, ah, you can take it. It's fine. So let's go from one Lady J to a different Lady J. Let's check out Retro Wave 3. Retro Wave 3, uh, still a Walmart exclusive. I guess that's never going away. Uh, they announced their next set of retro figures. We all know that that is a loose term as these are all figures that have come out within the last five-ish years. But that doesn't seem to be stopping anybody because I am, you don't see them on shelves or I haven't seen them on shelves hardly at all. The only one I've seen on shelf was Snake Eyes, and I was surprised about that. But I have now twice seen him on shelves, and oh, I wow. bought an extra. There's actually one above my head right here that I've, I'm leaving carded. He's the only one, and I always grab one. Well, not always. I grabbed one twice. I've seen him twice. Um, but they're not they're not sitting around, that's for sure. Yeah, Wave 2 is incredibly elusive. We Jared and I both have been doing some serious footwork just trying to find some of them in person just for our you know we don't have uh, any i bought a scarlet secondhand because i had to have it but i would like to get the whole set so yeah i have an inside man at walmart that i know and he has not been able to find anything well you don't anymore you just put him on blast yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, i doubt he listens to us <laughs> i use the old kids oh yeah my kids are looking for these gain sympathy <laughs> my kids scarlet and roadblock we desperately want these two figures <laughs> that are based on them can you please go back and look sir my wife <laughs> Destro will be so disappointed. <laughs> so, this, so again, I think the retro wave is doing better than anybody expected. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate because the this is probably the worst wave they've done to date. So, we'll, we'll start with this. Let's look at this Lady J. This Lady J is from uh, one of the last two packs that came out. They've, they've continued to scale down on the accessories. She, she, so, she does Way come down. with kind of a... Yeah, she comes with a bare minimum of stuff. And I don't, I don't think this is the best modern Lady J, but it's not the worst. There was a, one of the first ones that came out was still pretty rough when they were in their learning days. I think this figure looks, oh, it looks okay. I, it's definitely the best of the three that are being released. Her head mold is still not, I don't know, not quite what I would hope for. The figure itself looks fine. What, what are your, what's your take on these? Well, she hasn't seen a ghost in this version, <laughs> so that's good at least. This one's tougher. See, and once again, to me, I'm just hoping that these go the more the way of wave one where we can actually find them as opposed to the wave two i'm hoping that people think like you and they're like well these are okay for me i really like all three of these the lady j is someone i don't have a single lady j figure right now jumping in so mm -hmm. uh i would be excited to have this one as my first i i don't have any others to really compare it to but it definitely is weird to see that like the wave one figures had about 40 accessories with each, I think, is the actual number. That's they're uh, loaded, man. <laughs> like, I'm surprised they fit it all in the bubble. And then these have, she has three. Like, there is a large amount of empty space. Like, that's a that's more of a waste of plastic than straws are, guys. Come on. So, as a dude that has often stated how, how much you enjoy having an appropriate number of accessories that can all be held by the character at the same time, mm -hmm. do you prefer a figure like this that only has a couple basics? Or do you like the old loaded down Wave 1s where you're like, well, I got a bunch of extras? Well, I would rather it be like Wave 1s because at least those I can, like, she can't hold three guns. At least with, like, the Wave 1s 
like the snake eyes, you could put so many things on them, and then you had other accessories you could like set up and like take pictures with. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm happy to have these guns because they'll look really good with some of my characters that don't have guns, like uh, uh, what crankcase that came with the all striker. He needs a gun. Sure. One of those would look great with it. Um, I have my tripwire. He doesn't have a gun. One of those would look great with it. I mean, it would look weird because he's going to have his me uh, metal detector and a gun. But hey. <laughs> he's like, why does this? Why does this thing keep going off? <laughs> oh, it's my gun. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's all this this brass that I'm ejecting. <laughs> but no, I mean, I am actually really happy with all the ones that I've seen. I I am ready to get my hands on them. Um, I'm hoping that. They are easier to get because I still have yet to see. I really wanted that roadblock. I really came around after he was announced at first. So I was like, well, hey, he's okay. And now I'm like, I really want him. Yeah, man, I love that Scarlet. And I'm not going to back down from that position no matter how yeah. many people tell me I'm wrong. That Scarlet looks great. Finally getting to see that one of yours was, it was cool. It was nice to. Man, I would rather them make bad figures, but with a, but a new attempt than to be like, well, here's a Lady J we used five years ago, and here she is again. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they, I get that they don't have a lot to work with, but I will still encourage creativity over just straight up manufacturing. I just can't, I can't imagine, a, like, how much success they would have. Like, they would have so much success, in my mind, if they put these out. Because that price point, there's no action figures at that price point, really, right now. Mm -hmm. Everything's went six inch. So, you know, to put something out like this, they're probably making a good amount of money. Retailers are making a good amount of money. And it takes up less space than, than six inch figures do. I would love to see a world. I know we're never going to get back to how we were with, you know, even the, even the the earlier days of the modern line when you could find them um but we're definitely not getting back to the the og days when you could go in and have a wall of toys yeah um, but if you could have i mean even if i could just have a gi joe on the shelf when i go in even if it's the same one i've seen the the barrenness that we've not the baroness the barrenness that we have seen <laughs> is just astounding like it's just crazy that I mean, I've went into the same Walmart for three weeks and not seen a single new anything that I wanted. It's just crazy. It's both a blessing and a curse. You want the line to do well, and you want the you want Hasbro to know that there's a strong demand. And I, that's obviously is the case right now with everything that's come out because it's had a resurgence that I have not seen in a very long time where they literally they sell everything they've got. But at the same, the curse of that is that that means you are one of those people that are aggressively competing to find them no matter what, no matter what it takes. As somebody like me that's a is a true fanatic i'll mm -hmm. if i can't find it i will buy it and i will pay whatever dumb price i have to pay to have it because <laughs> that's just how i am i don't want to miss out on anything the bottom line with the retro wave in my opinion is no matter how bad the figures are i'm always going to buy them uh, if for nothing else than the classic card art which yeah. has not been you know has not re been reprinted for a lot of these characters so that was the easy one let's move on to cobra commander <laughs> so there is no way that I cannot start this conversation about Cobra Commander without talking about the amazing, excessive amount of room they made for accessories. And then they gave him a gun and a knife. Um, I don't know if they just made a whole bunch of these bubbles and they were like, well, we got to use them, Jerry. Just put them everywhere. <laughs> I'd like to see this cleaned up and look more like, I don't know, take up less room. Show me more of that card art I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do like that this, he comes with a practical, you know, that gun is a replica of what his original gun looks like. That knife will go, I think goes into that holster. Maybe I'm not sure. I don't actually own this. This is a reprinted Cobra commander from the, if you look at one of the other pictures, it goes on his thigh. Okay, so this is a a, a San Diego Co uh, San Diego Comic Con Cobra Commander. It came with the Missile Command cen Center that they reprinted, and there's this is a toughie. There's some stuff that's okay about this figure, and there's a few things that I don't love. It's it's also there are so many Cobra Commanders, and this certainly is not the best one of those by any means. But they did hit the bases. It's the Mass Cobra Commander. He's got his helmet. If you look at the card art, they've like painted the stripe that's on the top of his helmet to be more accurate. He's rocking a little bit more of a lighter blue than the dark blue that uh, is shown on his card art. He's mm -hmm. actually actually the card art is more colored like hooded Cobra Commander. 
Yeah. And this figure is actually a better color representation of what the uh, masked Cobra Commander's figures really do look like. Um, if I had to make a complaint about this figure, I, it has to be the the whatever's going on on his like ab crunch. It's like yeah. his it's like his jacket comes to an end too early, and then there's a pouch. But I got a belt on, and that's got a pouch on it too. So it it feels like it is interfering with its own parts. Like he's just like two pouches away from being a Rob Liefeld version, <laughs> except you can see this guy's feet. I, so again, I might be jaded because I've looked at Cobra Commanders my whole life and there's 50 plus of them. What do you think about this Cobra Commander? I have a problem because I like all of the Cobra Commanders. This ver- like this, the, the one with the face mask, I like all the different variations. So I have a little black, a little black one. And he has that same problem with his little pouches and jackets, not one to, not one to sit right. Um, and then I had to get the one that I had, one of the other ones I had, because I was like, is this the same but without the yellow? Because I've got the the light blue with the yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's, I mean, I guess it could be, but at least the the ones that I have don't have the knife that goes in, so technically that's something new and extra for me. So I'm gonna buy it. I've got. A couple hooded Cobra Commanders and a couple of the masked ones. So, so I know you haven't seen uh, all of the Cobra Commanders out there, but in terms of in general terms, do you prefer the battle mask over the hooded Cobra Commander? That's one of those ones that I flip flop almost every time. So I think what I've figured out as I think about it more, I like the figures of the battle mask more, um, but I like like the character with his hood more. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason being is that the battle mask is a lot harder to pose, um, ah. because it's so much bigger and it, it's always in that, you know, because you want to make it not look like it's just sitting there. Bleh. Um, sure. It, you know, it always has like movement. So it would look weird if he's just sitting at a desk and his mask is like waving, mm-hmm. you know, or something like that. But my preferred version of the character is with the hood, I believe. Okay. But like I said, I flip flop. So who knows? Next recording. Ask me again. <laughs> I will. I'll make a note. Yeah. <laughs> so that brings us to the last figure of Retro Wave Three. Oh, buddy, this figure wow. is a turkey, <sighs> man. So this is this is Duke. This Duke is got to be the most poorly assembled figure that, that I've seen in a very very long time. So they reuse this Duke mold. Man, tell me how you really feel. Man, I can't help it. <laughs> it's there. It's. I'd be hard pressed to find somebody that, that would willingly defend this figure. They use this figure in one of the battle packs that used to come with like a piece of the mass device. And it came with one of the episodes of the cartoon, which are great sets. And at that time, this, this version of Duke, this, this screaming Duke came with, he had a jet pack and he also had an American flag. And it was supposed to be a little bit of a callback to the opening of the G.I. Joe animated movie where he's like, he's got a jet pack and he's got a flag and he's like, ah, yo, Joe, or whatever. <laughs> so they were like, let's take the part where he's yelling and then get rid of all the other stuff that is a nod to that and make it real awkward for everybody that buys this figure. They put the harness on him for the jet pack, but I couldn't be bothered to include the jet pack. So one of, and then obviously you look at the card art, which is phenomenal and it so he doesn't have the like strap that goes across his vest because they had to put the jetpack thing on there it just this figure just is is very bad it's very bad <laughs> you can't buy a figure that's screaming and then go well how I, I can't use him in anything unless he's screaming <laughs> like I, you can't use this figure in a diorama and uh, unless he's screaming so there's I this is just poor decision making all around. I don't understand it. I don't know what they were thinking. Unless uh, the unless they were literally like, Hey guys, this is the only Duke head mold that we will manage to save. <laughs> it's this or nothing. And even then I would have said, Nothing, nothing, bud. Nothing do nothing. Um give people a headless duke and tell them to put one of their own heads on it. Am I am I being too harsh on this figure, Jared? Like what's your take on it? I look the only reason I'm buying this figure is to give accessories to the one that I have. <laughs> the, the one you bought me, which I like this version, it looks almost identical, and it has the strap that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to either pop the head off of this one and put it on that one and take the, the jetpack harness off and put the strap on, or vice versa. I don't know. But 
it, this one to me is my least favorite of the retro by far. It, it's it's okay. Don't get me wrong. If I didn't have that Duke, I might be thinking the same way. But I hate faces like that. Similar to the hooded Cobra Commander, it makes things really hard. Yeah, it's this is trash and exists in a. <laughs> I mean, it's at the bottom of the barrel. It's one of the worst things they've done in a really long time. They should be embarrassed. Go stand in the corner. <laughs> that's I'm not said. I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's uh. Well, hey. That being said. We might actually find this one in stores. Right? I guess that is the silver lining <laughs> is that I'll be able to buy this dumb figure that I don't want, that even that I can't even show it to my daughter because it'll make her throw up. At a... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll buy a bunch if they go on clearance just for the guns. <laughs> uh, all right. So last thing we have to talk about today is the G.I. Joe Cobra Battle Android Trooper coming out from Super 7 Studios. Oh, my gosh. So this is pretty wild thing to exist. So this was teased on Big Bad Toy Store for a bit, but we didn't have any images to go along with it. And now we do. And I got to say, I am always kind of a sucker when they do something that is outside of the box. This doesn't really have a home in the regular, you know, G.I. Joe collection. And that makes me love it even more it's a huge figure it's got the uh where the hologram would normally be on the bat they've actually got all the working parts you can take that piece off and see like all of the mechanics you can see pieces of the bat that you normally never see like this beneath the chest piece where all the little working parts are he's got so he's got removable chest panels he's got seven points of articulation he's got all the accessories that came with the original bat the like claw and the drill and the gun i'm not probably not identifying those correctly at all oh wait here it is gripper claw laser cannon and flamethrower that was really close. As a kid, the I only knew the I can't even identify them now. Probably that's probably the flamethrower. I would always put I think bats. The bottom one is the flamethrower. I would always put that accessory on my on my version one bats as a kid because I was like, well, that's a gun for sure. Because they didn't really <laughs> clarify a lot of that stuff when you were younger, and I never I don't remember ever seeing a bat use a flamethrower. I was always just like, that's the gun for sure, right? Oh, what's he yeah. gonna do with this claw? Forget this <laughs> thing, shoot him. So. Yeah, I I mean I like this a lot. It's I love stuff like this that is makes cool display pieces in a big collection. I know that's a pretty large umbrella, but I'm talking about like loyal subjects figures or even Funko Pops or the G.I. Joe lunch boxes, any you know, vinyl statues, anything that's not a straight up action figure. Or hey, even those Knock off Legos, right? Yeah, the built to rule stuff. Um, <laughs> Kid Robot did a vinyl Cobra Commander that yeah, was. That's cool. I really like stuff like that. When you first get something like that, you're like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But when you get a bunch of stuff like that, you're like, oh, I just got, you know, put it in a display case and kind of show the other, kind of the other side of the G.I. Joe uh, universe. And so this has got like a very specific Japanese kind of appeal to it. It's, I I think it's great. I, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily want them to make like a series of these. But one-offs like these, I think, are are real cool. And, I, I mean, I pre-ordered this the same day I pre-ordered all the other stuff. I think it'll look real cool. And I'll this might be one that I actually open up and kind of mess around with a little bit. I know you've warmed up to the bats quite a bit since we started, you know, talking about G.I. Joe. What's your take on this guy? I love it. Just to make sure that we don't only say good things, because that would be the worst thing in the world. <laughs> um, the only thing I wish is that it had, like, the older style of articulation. Not, not you know, full elbows and stuff. That's not going to happen. But just the legs. I wish the legs could move forward and backwards a little bit, which is hard mm. with that removable chest piece, but... That's the yeah. only, my only minor gripe. Yeah, I dig this. I'd like to see Super 7 dip into some more G.I. Joe properties and see what they can come up with. Yeah. Um, I think our I, – I don't know if anything's been announced or not, but it'd be cool to see, um, like, the reaction line to do some Joes as well. I think that would yeah. be cool. That'd be another cool spinoff. There are very few things that they can come up with that don't appeal to me on some level. That's yeah. just how I am. I'm, I like – everything to a certain extent it's very rare that somebody announces something and i'm repulsed by it uh the one the one thing we didn't talk <laughs> about did, in the that's the, the thing that is repulsive which i was still vile like a chump <laughs> the, the one thing we didn't talk about in our like in our tiny news items at the top is that they also announced a line of like snowboards and skis that are gi joe oh, themed yeah 
And that is, even though I think that stuff is cool, the price point on that stuff is out. I mean, it's just out of this world. What was the price point? I didn't, I didn't look it's, that far into I, it. I think the snowboard is in like the three hundred dollar range. Ooh. I'm not saying that's an outrageous price for a snowboard. I'm saying uh, for a guy that lives in Indiana, uh, <laughs> that would have that would only mount it on his wall. Uh, there's, I, it's, I just can't justify it. Just get so, that and the skis and make some kind of like display in the background. I'll just get them both and I'll just putter around town and yell, "I'm a snow job! I'm a snow job!" <laughs> you got to so, get a really big parka, just a <laughs> giant parka, and wear it too. So that's going to do it for us today. Thanks so much for being patient with us while I moved to a new home. I have a great new house that I'm really, really happy about. And it has a huge space specifically for my G.I. Joe hobby. And we will film some stuff in the upcoming future so you can kind of see us unboxing some stuff that I've had boxed up for a decade. And we're going to lay out this room as, as like a little museum to my favorite hobby and thanks to jaren for coming over and helping me put some stuff away and kind of dig through the mess that this that this collection is and has become over the years hey i'll come over anytime that was a uh that was a trip that was awesome i mean seeing i mean i've seen more gi joe figures there than i've probably seen in the rest of my life combined <laughs> um, plus i got to play with all your vamps as anyone who's watched this for more than uh one episode now i think i've managed to successfully mention a vamp in most of our episodes yeah you keep Um, sneaking them in (laughs) i uh i did get to play with a couple of those and then uh you know the stinger and you know it's pretty cool if you want to reach out to us directly you can find uh jaron runs our instagram at anything joe's pod you can reach me on the twitter it's also anything joe's pod or if you don't like social media, that's cool. You can reach us directly at anything Joe's podcast at gmail.com. We'll be back on the regular now. We've got a lot of stuff lined up for you guys, and I'm excited to get to it. I'll have a better workspace for when we're filming, and I am extremely excited to get into that. Yeah, also, join the Facebook. Go on there, like. I would love to have some discussions with people, um, especially more people that know way more about G.I. Joe than I do. Uh, I'd love to learn things that you have. Tell me your stories about G.I. Joe. Um, I would love to hear from you. I think it would be great. Special thanks to Psycho Drive-In for hosting us. We always greatly appreciate it. Psycho Drive-In is an amazing website. You can find all kinds of excellent pop culture content there. And that's going to do it for us today. Jaron, it's been great recording back in the studio. I've, I've tremendously missed this. Sometimes It has been phenomenal being back. Sometimes I, when we're off for a long time, I'm like, that's a lot of work. But then when we're actually doing it, I'm like, God, this is one of the most enjoyable things that I do with my life. <laughs> yeah, I love being able to tell people that I'm in, uh, involved in the G.I. Joe podcast. And then I always put in the caveat, I don't know a lot about G.I. Joe, but I'm learning. That's okay. Hey, yeah, this is for newcomers and experts alike. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you join us on our next episode where anything's available for discussion here on Anything Joe's. We'll be right back.